Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about pressure mapping. Pressure mapping obviously is how the low frequency energy in your room is distributed through your room. We all know from past videos that the dimensions of the room are really important. Axial, tangential, and oblique modes. Axial are between two parallel surfaces. Oblique are between, or I'm sorry, tangential are between four and oblique are between six. Not two parallel corners. Stop with that nonsense, that corner nonsense. The definition is two parallel wall surfaces producing the axial modal unwanted pressure, not two parallel corners. This is the case where the industry has taken a half truth and promoted it into a fact. And it's nonsense. Plus, just use a little common sense. If the whole wall is causing the problem, what chance do you have with the square footage availability in a corner? I mean, it's a little bit ludicrous. So think before you act, uh, please. So low frequency energy in the room. We want to balance. Is there more between the front and the rear wall? Is there more between the side walls? Is there more between the floor and the ceiling? All that can be measured. Okay, so our goal with our pressure map is to have these pressure pockets that are really close in pressure to each other. Okay, we, let's say we got a plus six here. Well, that doesn't work with the rest of the room. So we got to work on that. Well, we can. We can tune that particular part of the room with our new modules that are two foot by two foot. So we want equal distribution of the pressure and we also want equal distribution of the pressure at gain. So you all know that if you turn your gain knob up on your preamplifier, 80, and the room is pressurized at 80 dB SPL, you're going to get a certain response curve. Hopefully you're going to get a nice balance curve like this one. You go to 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86 dB, Okay, all of it changes. So for every quarter half dB, all of this changes. So that's why we use broadband absorption to cover wide frequency ranges because the low frequencies as you reach for that gain, they have a greater impact on the room dynamic. So we want to make sure that the pressure is equally distributed within the room. Well, how do you do that? You treat all four walls. You treat the ceiling and sometimes you treat the floor, depending on usage. We've done both. So you wrap the room in a sound absorbing blanket, if you will, that goes down to 30 cycles and our technology goes that low. Yes, you need space. Yes, you need budget, but you can get this. You can walk around in your room while something is playing and not hear any exaggeration in the back corners, the side walls, the front behind the speakers. It'll all be smooth as it should be. Because if it's not, that's distortion. It's untreated distortion. And our goal is to treat. You can EQ for all of these problems here. You can't EQ this plus 10 here can't do that. Okay. So take a sine wave generated at about 80 dB SPL. Take a simple decibel meter, a pressure meter, walk around the room. You're not going to get it the first time. Feel it. Watch over here in this corner, 80 dB SPL. Over here, 83. Maybe over here, 86. Okay. So you're going to get ranges from low to high within the room. And those ranges and frequency and strength and amplitude of those frequencies will tell us what kind of treatment we need to use. Here's a, my favorite one to have people do, and most rooms fail. Take a pressure reading behind the speakers. Take one at the listening position. They got to be within a half a dB. I've never met a room that can satisfy that. I'm not bragging, but all of ours do. And that's a goal. Because if you don't have equal pressure throughout the room, especially, you know, I watch a lot of these guys mix film, film scores to match the, the film score to the film. And they have producers. 
and the producers sit in a desk behind them or a chair or whatever the case may be, okay? It better be right at the producer's desk because the producer's the one paying for everything. So you don't want his desk plus seven plus eight when everything else in the room is balanced. Same thing at the mix position for the engineer. You don't want any large peaks at the position. You want balance. You want uniformity. You want predictability. You want consistency. And we can get that for you. So just kind of an overlay on pressure mapping, how it works in a room. And practice this. Get to know your room. Get to know your room. Every problem in your room we can treat. You got to figure it out first. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.